busted. Hello and thanks for staying with us. Uh, welcome to Political Platform. Uh, my name is Amechi Anakwe. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning. Uh, one uh, notable development uh, in the National Assembly yesterday. Both chambers, the appropriation committees, uh, turning in the report on the 2018 appropriation bill. We saw an increase of 508 billion on the figure the president sent in. That's 8.612 trillion. But the figure now stands at and 9.120 trillion. So uh, we expect the conflict between the executive and the legislature over the powers of the National Assembly uh, to increase figures presented uh, in budget estimates yet to be resolved uh, by the judiciary. None of the two arms have summoned uh, uh, the courage to approach the court for uh, a declarative judgment and interpretative judgment as to whether the National Assembly has got the right to increase estimate. They quarrel all the time, but uh, they have refused to have it resolved amicably and legally. Are we going to see another round of quarrel? That's the big question. Will the president sign uh, after the budget may have been passed this week? There are uh, promises from the uh, National Assembly that between today and tomorrow, they will likely uh, pass that bill. We'll be linking up with Chris Azubogu, the Deputy Chairman, House Committee on Appropriation for... Uh, developments for his uh, input on uh, the action of the National Assembly in presenting the report of the budget. Six months uh, uh, after uh, it was uh, presented by the president. Some say it's the longest since the year 2000 uh, when uh, Nigeria returned uh, to democracy a year before that the budget will stay this number of uh, period in the National Assembly. But some good news uh, for the economy, inflation rate for the 15th month in a row uh, running, inflation rate has been going down. And April figures uh, came out, April 2018 figures came out yesterday. The National Bureau of Statistics put it at 12.48%. Very good news. Uh, the prices of goods and services are uh, not sky skyrocketing. The hope is that it will go to single digit, 897. That would be very beautiful. Many expect that the inflation rate uh, may pick, uh, pick up uh, later in the year when the election campaign spendings uh, uh, begin to get to its zenith. But the new, the new PDP's uh, ultimatum uh, to uh, the APC leadership to convene a meeting between two of them to address the issues of marginalization elapsed on Tuesday. That's yesterday. So what will the group do? Would they pull us from the party? Already the governor of uh, Kaduna State, Nasir Erufai, says it's good readings to buy rubbish. Let them go. We don't need them. The President Muhammad Buhari does not need them. We'll still win in key states in the north even without them. And El Zaki and the wife, leader of the Islamic movement of Nigeria, uh, they were docked in Kaduna yesterday for culpable homicide and illegal assembly. After years of uh, being illegally detained uh, by the government, uh, the, they are now facing trial in Kaduna uh, in a case brought before them by the Kaduna state government. My colleague uh, Shola Jaisimi is uh, joining me on the program this morning. Good morning, uh, Dr. Mecha Anakwe. A very interesting 24 hours we've had both on the political, economic, and even security scene. Um, reports coming in from uh, Toto, that's a town in neighboring Nasarawa state is that no less than 31 people have been killed, about 50 missing. Intercommunal clashes still occurring in this country. What are the law enforcement agents doing? These are the questions. Only yesterday, the chief of army staff was in that local government. I'm talking about Buriningwari. In Kaduna state. Yes, in Kaduna. And he gave marching orders to his commanders who are there, as well as the troops that look. Three weeks, that's what I give you to ensure that normalcy returns to this area. 
But we know this is not the first time Shifu Afghanistan is giving the ultimatum to his commanders. He, he gave about, such uh, to the Boko Haram. Yes, uh, the Lofi operation. Lofi uh, yes, in, in Burundi State. Not, it came and passed, nothing happened, and life continued as usual. But, but the good news is that with the uh, expected establishment of a brigade, sorry, a battalion in Brinigwari, that means things will begin to happen. And the Kaduna State government has already said, look, a, an existing secondary school will be cleared out by the end of this third term for soldiers to immediately move in as a makeshift temporary place for the soldiers who will be in that uh, battalion. The killings have continued, and it's no longer news in Nigeria. I missed it. Maybe the newspapers didn't deem it fit to uh, give it a prominent uh, mention, but some did. Uh, it tells you about the value we attach to human life, the sanctity of life, and the nature of killings uh, going on in Nigeria. The uh, Vice President uh, Yemi Oshibajo was in Benue State yesterday, a good move from the Vice President, where he announced that a fund 10 billion naira has been set aside uh, to rebuild communities destroyed by drink clashes uh, uh, between his men and Some will say better late than never. Some will say, uh, how will you compare 10 billion to precious lives? But it's something uh, that is being done. So many people have accused the government of not doing anything now. They are beginning to uh, do something tangible. Let's hope that beyond the 10 billion uh, that was pledged, it should be judiciously used, uh, but the government should do more in uh, dealing with the spate of killings across the country. Well, uh, my uh, another colleague uh, is uh, in the studio with me, Adebayo Abodori. Thank you so much for joining us. Amishi, um, well, good news, cheerful news for Justice uh, Silvano Guta. Sylvester Nguta. I mean, Sylvester, right there. Sylvester, he, yesterday he was discharged and acquitted of uh, false declaration of assets before the Code of Conduct uh, Tribunal. I think he has uh, faced his ordeal since... Uh, since the raid, the raid on, on the homes of justices and judges, uh, at, at long last, he was set free yesterday. And uh, Kano State, of, Kano State uh, House of Assembly is under lock and key. The, the police has sealed off the place. And uh, yesterday, despite the seal of the 24 rebelling lawmak uh, lawmakers out of uh, 40, uh, Announced that uh, they have removed uh, the the two, two, of the two of the principal officers. Although uh, that move, whether it was done on the floor of the house, uh, is an issue that will still be raised. But they have signed uh, their names and they have announced that they are no longer their leader. It does seems as if the crisis in the Kano State House Assembly is ongoing and may not end so soon. Well, the action of the Code of Conduct Tribunal uh, yesterday in discharging uh, Sylvester Nguta was not unexpected. Recall, uh, when the uh, DSS invaded the homes of judges, then we shouted on top of our voices there, like Uhira Bonsremi would say, uh, here telling them that it was the wrong move, uh, that it needed to be done uh, more tact, they, they were supposed to be more tact uh, in uh, carrying out that uh, raid. At, at the end of the day, it has come to nothing. That raid has come to nothing. It's just a wasted uh, efforts, except the fact that uh, the judges are now aware that sometime uh, some people may be watching you and you may of course uh, uh, be at the receiving and if you indeed uh, soil your hands and some reports say the judiciary is uh, the second most corrupt institution in the country outside the police. So uh, when the DSS want to raid, uh, maybe they will ha have a reason to do that. But the fact is that the uh, real uh, process has been established. If you have anything against any serving judge in terms of corruption or his action as a judiciary officer, you must first take the matter to the National Judicial Council, NJC. I, I mean, you need to have heard uh, the way the uh, acting chairman of the EFCC, Ibrahim Magu, uh, gleefully and joyfully spoke yesterday at the launch of the EFCC's new uh, uh, headquarters, uh, headquarters in he, Abuja. Yes, he repeated almost twice that, look, we have secured the conviction of a senior advocate of Nigeria. When he appeared, like I said, the audience didn't hear him properly. He repeated it again and again until he got the clap. So basically, he's trying to say, look, fine, we might not have gotten some of the judges, mm. but even the senior well, lawyers... it was the DSS that them. prosecuted the judges, though. Exactly. Uh, but, but they have the uh, senior advocate who was in prison for 30 days 
for offering bribe to uh, judges. So uh, the process of dealing uh, with issues of corruption when it involves a judiciary officer, especially a, a judge, is to first report to the NJC, uh, send in a, 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 a petition, petition, they will evaluate, and if it's found wanting, they will now uh, give the necessary institutions uh, of government to take it up there. The new EFCC headquarters, a very building, mag a very beautiful, magnificent uh, building, multi-story building. Uh, I hope there is there is a, a, a there's, there's provisions a to be a forensic laboratory, state of the art, and there are provisions for uh, det detention. detention <laughs> well, the, the totality <laughs> of it is that uh, uh, it's not the amount of money spent so far. Is that uh, is the personnel that will be there. We hope those who will occupy those offices there. Uh, we put on neat, new thinking caps just as they are occupying new office, new, new, new office offices in their new building complex. Those so that in such a way that the new thinking cap will provide them new strategy, new approach in tackling the canker worm of corruption. And I want to add new motivation. And her salary, uh, we need to really motivate them because to fight corruption in Nigeria or indeed any other part of the world is not an easy tax. Let's uh, take your views. FAM when we'll be, uh, we'll try to run through some of the mails. We have a, a produce of our email platform. We'll be launching a new email platform, not the usual one from uh, June 1. Uh, you may not be able to reach us again on political platform at yahoo.com. This one will be deploying very soon. It's very efficient and can uh, take anything. You yeah, it's us. our own created uh, platform, and uh, we, all, we 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 will uh, between now and then, maybe beginning from Monday, we start experimenting with the two receiving mails, uh, receiving from mail the on the two platforms. But by June one, uh, we are going to we'll say have to bye migrate. Bye. We are going to say bye bye to Yahoo and then uh, embrace our. Uh, let's welcome a fame when we'll be. Thank you, Amichi. We have uh, this particular mail coming from Emmanuel Ocharif, who writes to us from Maraba in Nasarawa State, and it starts by saying, Good morning, crew members. I watched with keen interest on AIT yesterday evening when you, you argued inconclusively on the legal position on the Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Kaya De Fayemi, on his contest of Guba seat while still sitting in, the, in office. I think with or without any law backing his double positions as seating minister and gubernatorial candidate in Ekiti State, there is a need to bring in morality in our political behavior. His actions draws back the fight against corruption of the federal government. The temptation of using his present office to influence the outcome of the election can never be ruled out. I urge the minister to resign his appointment immediately without further delay. And then this one is on security concerns in the Northeast and as Zuchi Joke in Lagos State says, it is disheartening that two months down the line, the federal government and Adamawa State government have gone under concerning Lia Sharibu, the abducted Dapchi schoolgirl by Boko Haram, who is still held because she refused to denounce her Christian faith. Her family just marked her 15th birthday in her absence. I listened to her father as he spoke on this station and was struggling to hold back tears. The family needs succor. The big questions are, why should it be abductors that also return their victims? What were the terms and conditions federal government reached with Boko Haram that made them to hold onto her till date? Was it reached along religious line? Because that is what it seems. Efforts should be doubled by all concerned to secure her freedom as much as the remaining Chibok girls. Is it a sin to educate a girl child in Nigeria now? We need mercy. And that's where we draw the curtain on today's mail segment. The route to reach us is still political platform at yahoo.com. The platform will present to you the latest to reach us very soon. Um, Ifeima Mobi. Thank you so much for staying with us. Uh, let's uh, restart uh, with the 2018 appropriation bill. 508 billion naira on top of the 8.61 trillion presented by the president. The figure now is 9.120 trillion. Let's welcome uh, Chris Azubogu, a member of the House of Representatives and Deputy Chairman, House Committee on Appropriation. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, one newspaper had a headline on his uh, front page this morning. Uh, it says, National Assembly parts uh, the budget with 508 billion. Is it padding? It's not padding, it's alien to the parliament. We have appropriated the 
because because Sean Mandate does not determine how money is of the past we spend. So based on the needs of the nation and in collaboration and understanding with the government, budget has been increased for obvious reasons which are contained in the detail. So, uh, what uh, areas uh, precipitated uh, this uh, increase? Uh, where are we putting this uh, new money? You understand very well. For instance, the Federal Deputy Council over the period have been giving approvals for new new projects after the, the submission of the proposal. And some of those uh, uh, expect approval they are not contained in the budget. And for you to do that, it has to be accommodated. And there were other things that emerged the budget has been submitted. I told you, much what comes from the executive is a proposal. If there are reasons, obviously, even from the executive, to the budget, it's possible. Because uh, what happened last November, is not what happened now. So those things have been taken care of and have been said. Very fully, when the budget is a plan, a proposed plan, because of uh, trying to uh, verify and uh, process the budget, by the National Assembly. So, so yeah. let, 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 let's re-emphasize it again that the 500 billion is to accommodate projects that, that were approved by the uh, Federal Executive Council after the budget has been presented, but they were not included. Jointly, no, no, you can't, it mustn't be only them. There are other projects that we identified as, as need of the nation. By National Assembly, which they have powers to. But it's not only the executive, in consultation with the executive, sure. Okay, so, so, so it was done have, in consultation with the executive. Sure. Yeah, did they accommodate the issue of uh, this uh, new the, the budget for this for the aircraft to be purchased from uh, America? The, that one, uh, that one. Um, um, there were already proposals by His Excellency from uh, from the executive over over twelve billion to the Air Force for purchase of aircraft. That one is there. Yeah, so we done the details of those, some of those things have not been looked at. If you're talking of uh, the four hundred and thirty-six million dollars, it was not specifically as a line. There's a global provision for purchase of aircraft, which was made uh, uh, available in the budget of the uh, Nigerian Air Force. And also, there are quite a good number of items, both in the world, uh, infrastructure generally. Uh, health for National Health Fund provision was made. And uh, you also realize that uh, revenue profile increased because the benchmark price increased uh, from the sales of oil, you can see that uh, we moved from 45 to 51 dollars per barrel. So that accommodated the revenue for the increase in size of our budget. Uh, let, let me ask you a personal question. Are you, are you comfortable that we are passing the 2018 budget in May? Excuse me, what, what brings about this comfort? The last budget was passed in June. And everybody has... Uh, is that the standard? Yeah, excuse me, everybody has 12 months life. If there's any good, any constitutional arrangement to be made for budget to run the way, uh, the way people are proposing, I mean, there must be a special arrangement to put that in place. I ask you for, can I ask you another question? If budget was passed in January, when at the point in time 2017 budget has performed about 330, between 330 and 480 million, can you compare what Honorable Minister of Finance just said yes, a couple of days back? That the 2017 budget has performed one point, over 1.5 trillion. Do you think that has not impacted on Nigeria? Or do you think that the budget was there no subsidy budget for Nigeria? Did Nigeria have any problem? It's that the lot, lot of Nigerians were improved because the budget that was already proposed and passed in 2017 was being procured. So, and most of the money that was uh, that was gotten because it was uh, it was premised on the uh, uh, deficit. And uh, when by the time the executive want to get the money, I started implementing the budget. They just personally, you go everywhere in Nigeria, you can see projects are being going up, and everything happens. So, two days, present budgets have performed very well. Uh, to what extent, what percentage in terms of the capital aspect could you say the 2017 budget has uh, been implemented? There are two things. Releases are not uh, performance. Just understand? The amount of money released is about, about 1. Uh, over 1. 1.5, a little over 1.5 trillion by the Honorable Minister. And, but the total uh, capital for 2017 was about 2.7. So it has performed incredibly well. Well above 50%, waiting to 60, 70% by releases. Then for us, who, because of details of what we needed to do, had to go, as those monies were being released and projects are being executed, we took our time to make sure that once that we are released, not just we release money, that it touches, it touches the project. So we need to ascertain. But at the level of the time, the budget came in 2017, uh, November, at the time, what happened around March, uh, April, when money had been released towards those projects, we need to 
So you cannot overappropriate where there is need. When money has been paid and stuff has been done, you still left the proposal there. But it is a guide and a plan. Okay. So what has been happened is that because of the time spent to ensure that the budget is being implemented, we use it to oversight and the supervision that was done. We were able to make sure that money is there, reduced where money has been paid, so they will not be having the same amount in uh, in budget twenty eight. The expectation. And money is taken to where money is needed. The, 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 for instance, the, the, the national health fund. We make provisions for it. Uh, there's an overwhelming uh, liability of federal government to NDDC. Provision was made. The new universities, twelve universities that we are that we are uh, that, that come to life. The new universities. We make provision for them to have take of grant. So these are things. They are critical areas. You need to make sure that. Okay, that, that, that's very good, especially when you say it was uh, done in consultation with the executive. But the yes. expectation. For sure. Yeah, the, the expectation is that uh, the passage itself will be done between today and tomorrow. Sure, my God's grace, and once we do that, uh, it will be the president of the president to be Mr. President for absence. Yeah, did, did you, did, was there any provision for likely increase in salaries for civil servants, particularly at the federal level? The main issue of minimum, minimum wage. wage. Minimum wage? Yes. Those ones are, are left uh, with the executive proposal. It's not something we do. Just that these are administrative. Just that if they agree, you can't make commitments that are not. Better than we will not, but the, whatever it's, it's involved in personnel costs, you can agree with me that personnel costs are actually getting too stagnant. Anyway, uh, even if uh, they, 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 they do include it, they can come by way of a supplementary appropriation. Yeah. Come again. I said, even if it was not included, the executive may come by way of supplementary appropriation when the minimum wage yeah, takes sure. effect. For sure, yeah. Mm. Okay, um, let's hope that uh, we have made progress. Uh, from uh, the consideration of this budget, uh, six months, uh, the, the president presented it um, this, uh, November 2017. Some say is the longest period it has ever spent in the National Assembly since the year 2000. But uh, are you confident that going forward in the years to come, we'll get rid of this uh, uh, long delay? I agree with you that there is a need for us to even develop an organic budget process. But before that, there must be a traditional process in place that will accommodate old and new. But you make it in such a way that when the budget comes, the old one becomes um, irrelevant. Mm. Just and it is not going to work. Because effort has been made and we expect to, unless we are not up to our life, to our responsibilities as parliamentarians. You know, when you say that budget has 12 years, it's just a little more life. Just and you, you know, it's just so thin. When you want to transmit from, from when, when, from either May or June, to the May or April or May of next year, there must be a transition. Okay. So that there will be a rollover of the existing budget in the other one. And these are things that must be ironed out. But as it is, I think nothing has been lost. Okay. The experience, right, the experience of government has not been. Unlike in America, where by uh, <laughs> where by government was shut down. There's no shutdown in this system. Well, the, the, the life of the 2017 budget were lapsed by uh, end of this month, May 30. Uh, let's hope the president will sign the uh, budget you expected to pass by then so that we don't have that shutdown. No, so that one, I mean, we're done with that. The life of the budget of 2017 will expire 11th of June. Okay, 11th of June. Okay. Th thank you so much, uh, Honorable Chris Azubogu, the Deputy Chairman, House Committee on Appropriation. I, I met you just as a... You, you said, and uh, the Honorable also acceded to that, the chances of there being a federal supplementary budget for 2018 is likely. Why do I say this? It's a political year. Mm. Electioneering and everything will go up. Oil prices going up. Exactly. So there's money to there be spent. Be money. And you know, uh, the political class, uh, Mr. Uh, Bayabodri might agree with me, would like to do everything to appease all those who are agitating projects labor, everywhere yes labor is waiting organized labor uh, they are the committees have sat at the different uh, six geopolitical zones they're waiting for the report of that committee but they have a standpoint that look either between 60 or between 40 40 and sixty-three thousand as minimum wage so 66 uh, so we see some of these things happening but i i just want to encourage like honorable uh has said the deputy chair of the house of reps committee on a provision that look they need to do the needful let them pass this budget today or tomorrow then we now know it's served in the president's court 
If the president has disagreements with the over five hundred billion that has been naira that has been added mm. to it, then probably we might see another issue on our hands. Okay, let's hope it doesn't come to that. But quickly, Adebayo Baduri, Rufai, governor of Kaduna State, has dismissed the threat of the new PDP to pull us out of APC. He says, we don't need them. That I go back to history 20, 2003, 2007, uh, 2011, that the president, that's Muhammad Buhari then, not in APC, one in key states of Kanu, Sokoto, Pwara, and Adamao. He selected these states because the bulk of the new PDP members are from these states. Uh, Kanu, the likes of uh, Rabbi Musa Kwankwaso, Sokoto, Tambua, the governor there, uh, Pwara, Bukola Saraki, and Adamawa, of course, former vice president and some of his uh, political associates. He believes that even when they go, the president will still capture this. Well, you know, Erufai was one of, the, of those to, uh, to engage in uh, what we call on this program, uh, jumpology. He was the, one of the first to jump to jump out of the PDP, first to CPC, APC. and then later to move uh, to APC. We move to APC. So um, it's it's a game of politics, and definitely he holds his opinion. He has a very strong feeling. Uh, how he changes his opinion? It was the same uh, uh, Rufai that described uh, Muhammad Buhari as un unelectable yeah. when he was in PDP. Now yeah. he he has become uh, so electable yeah. that he and will the not The same Rufai. You will recall uh, shortly a few months after the president was uh, sworn in, said he has not performed and wrote a, uh, a, a letter to who later a stinker who later leak out. And uh, today is in the forefront of saying that come what may, uh, Buhari will uh, win his election. And, and just before we go, mm -hmm. I think we need to give that email address again. It's mm -hmm. it's political platform at raypower.fm. Maybe you can repeat it. Political platform at raper.fm. So uh, when we come back tomorrow, uh, these are more that you'll be getting from us. Uh, maybe the budget would have been passed and other sundry point code developments. On behalf of my colleagues, my name is Amechan. Enjoy your day.